This here is the brand new Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. By far the cheapest S21 device within the company's lineup and really offers some significant improvements over its predecessor. With that being said, it may not be the must buy device that the original S21 FE was. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. I'm Nick Gray, and this is my review of Samsung's Galaxy S21 FE. Let's take a look. To kick things off, let's go over everything that this phone actually delivers from a hardware perspective when you buy this phone. Right up front is a brand new 6.4 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display with an adaptive 120 hertz refresh rate, which honestly I think looks really, really good. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset, which makes it extremely powerful. Though the base model comes with six gigabytes of RAM, though you can go all the way up to eight gigabytes if you want to, with 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage. On the back, you have two 12 megapixel sensors for the main and ultra wide cameras, and then an eight megapixel sensor for the 3X telephoto camera, and then a 32 megapixel sensor for the selfie camera up front, peeking through the display. It also has a 4,500 milliamp our battery on the inside, IP68 dust and water resistance, and it's also the first Android device from Samsung to be launching with Android 12 pre-installed right out of the box. From a design standpoint, the Galaxy S21 FE honors that same iconic look that we got on the Galaxy S21 devices from last year, something that I really like, sporting that same contour finish for the camera cutout on the back of the phone. The difference here though is that Samsung is using polycarbonate on the back of the phone and also the camera module itself, melding the design elements that we saw on the S series and also the A series phones from last year. I'm honestly a huge fan of the look and feel of this phone, and especially since Samsung's really embracing that polycarbonate aesthetic rather than trying to pass off the back of the phone as being faux glass as it did on the regular S21. On paper, this appears to be a really great device. So why the hesitation in giving it my full recommendation? Well, there's actually three different factors at play that you need to consider before buying this phone. And the first one being its price at $699. The Galaxy S21 FE is the same price as its predecessor, which could be a good thing. But the main reason we like the Galaxy S21 S20 FE was because it was $300 less than all the other Galaxy S20 devices from the year before. That's not the same case anymore since the Galaxy S21 made its debut at $799, $200 less, and will probably even be cheaper within the next couple weeks with the S22 lineup right around the corner. And that brings us to the second factor you should probably be considering when looking at buying this device. The fact that Samsung's Unpacked event is scheduled for February 9th, where they're expected to unveil the Galaxy S22 lineup for this year. Based off of all the leaks and the rumors, those phones will be better in every single way and will likely cost the same as the phones that they're replacing as well. Now, if the S21 FE would have been unveiled back in August of last year, when it was originally expected, this really wouldn't have been too much of an issue. But if you're thinking about buying this phone right now with the S22 lineup literally right around the corner, I'd say just wait a little bit long to see what Samsung delivers with the S22 lineup. Up. And that brings us to the third factor you should consider, and that is Google's Pixel 6. When compared to the Galaxy S21 FE, Google's smartphone is probably the best matchup on the market right now. But it beats out Samsung's phone when it comes to software updates, camera performance, and price as well. At just $600, it's currently my favorite smartphone within the budget flagship category, even now in early 22. For the price, it simply can't be beat. Now, if you've gotten this far in the video and you haven't been dissuaded from purchasing the Galaxy S21 FE, the good news is, is that this phone is actually really good. And honestly, I really like it. As mentioned already, the phone is equipped with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset, delivering incredible performance and honestly, an amazing gaming experience as well. Like any other phone running that same chipset though, thermal throttling does kick in after about five to 10 minutes when you're really pushing this phone hard using a demanding game. But that's honestly just a known issue with the chipset itself. 
Having only six gigabytes of RAM in the base model is a little shameful in 2022, especially when you consider the price, but it still gets the job done if you're willing to live with having six to eight apps in memory at once. If you are a heavy multitasker though, I definitely recommend springing for the eight gigabyte model, which will cost you an extra 50 bucks, but it also double your storage to 256 gigabytes. The trip camera setup on the back sports two 12 megapixel sensors for the main and ultra wide cameras, along with an eight megapixel telephoto camera that features a 3X optical zoom. Now this is actually a real upgrade over the Galaxy S21 since that phone there only delivered a digital crop for its zoom camera. Overall, image quality is a lot better than what Samsung delivered on the original S20 FE. And even if you're comparing shots against the S21 lineup, even the S21 Ultra, the S21 FE still holds its ground and is honestly really hard to tell apart. Of course, that really only applies to the rear camera and only when capturing images in well-lit conditions. Low light shots from this phone are definitely a step in the wrong direction with images turning out a lot blurrier more than they should, even with the dedicated night mode turned on. For being a $600 smartphone, I do have to say that I'm pretty impressed with the video capture you can get out of this device with the rear cameras, which I'm using to record right now with that main camera, but the ultra wide as well. And this here's a look at selfie video from the front facing camera on the Galaxy S21 FE recorded at 4K 30 FPS, though this does max out at 4K 60, which is something that is very rare for a lot of Android devices still these days. So it's nice to see it on a $700 device from Samsung. When it comes to battery life, the phone delivers a 4,500 milliamp hour cell on the inside with 25 watt wired charging and then 15 watts when going wireless. I have no real issues with how long the battery actually lasts since it usually gets me through a long 14 hour day, but I usually only have about a 10% charge left before turning in for the night. So if you're planning on staying out late into the evening, I definitely recommend a midday charge in order to top this thing off. Charging speeds could be a little bit quicker, but you are able to go from zero to 100% in roughly 90 minutes, which is pretty average for a Samsung device. So after all that, where does that leave the Galaxy S21 FE? Well, if you're looking at this phone in a vacuum, it's honestly a pretty spectacular device. The issues really only come to light when the $699 sticker price comes into play. If you're somehow able to snatch this phone up for say $100 less, it would definitely be worth it. But at its base price, the Galaxy S21 FE just isn't the phone that I'd be purchasing right now with the Pixel 6 being a great alternative and also Samsung's Galaxy S22 lineup just looming right around the corner. But if pricing really isn't an issue for you and you simply must have this phone, you definitely won't disappoint it. And it's gonna get even better over time as Samsung's gonna be delivering software updates to the Galaxy S21 FE over time, making it an even better phone over the years. And that's gonna do it. Feel free to jump into the comments and let me know what your thoughts are on the Galaxy S21 FE. If you're gonna be buying one or if you're gonna be waiting around for the Galaxy S22 lineup within the next couple weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.